These acts often are followed by others of an obscene character. The initiates reveling in these forms of excess believe themselves to be the elect of God and the arbiters of destiny. They are the successors of the fakirs of India. No warning will save them. Thirji is the highest degree. Necromancy is limited to the summoning of dead souls, but the thurgis of the 19th century evoked the entities qualified by them as genie, angels of light, exalted spirits, spirits of fire, etc. In their meetings scattered throughout the world, they worship Lucifer. The three mysterious letters, J, B, M, that the common initiate sees in Masonic temples are reproduced in meeting rooms of the Luciferians, but they no longer mean Jackin, Bohaz, Mahabon, as in the lodges. In Thurgi, these three letters mean Jesus, Bethlehemitus, Elicticus. Thurgi is therefore pure Satanism, end quote. Moreover, it is important to note that Kabbalists admitted to the mysteries of Thurgi never mentioned the word Satan. They look upon certain dissident adepts who invoke the devil under the name of Satan as heretics, whose system they call goity or black magic. They call their own practices <sighs> Thurgi or white magic. End quote. They go by many names and claim separation from each other based on fundamental differences. However, they're all initiates of ancient Babylonian mystery schools, practitioners of the kindred rites. They deliberately glorify Lucifer as the principle of good while believing our God, Yahweh, as the principle of evil. This ideology has issued a papal bull concerning witchcraft. Quote, it has come to our ears that numbers continue right up into the present day. Quote, the child victim was usually a young infant, usually a witch's child or unbaptized. In other words, not part of the Christian community. This last is an important point and is the reason why unbaptized children were considered to be a greater danger for witches than baptized, end quote. The subject of child sacrifice is far too extensive for this short video and it will require its own in-depth investigation. So, having no independent life, they imitate the life of him who evokes them as the shadow does the body. These elementals draw the vital heat from a person's in good health and quickly exhaust those who are weak. That is why one feels a chill of the atmosphere when approaching a medium who are persons possessed by these spirits that will never manifest in the presence of anyone able to unveil the mystery of their monstrous birth." End quote. Now that we've exposed their methods, let's take a quick look at their rise to political power. The year was 1900. It is one of the key elements used in all schools of Luciferian magic. It is the main source of power for these people and continues right up into the present day. Quote, the child victim was usually a young infant, usually a witch's child or unbaptized, in other words, not part of the Christian community. This last is an important point and is the reason why unbaptized children were considered to be in greater danger from witches than baptized." End quote. The subject of child sacrifice is far too extensive for this short video, and it will require its own in-depth investigation. So, for now, let's move on. One of the most important aspects of all magic is the acquisition of supernatural power and the ability to influence the natural world through these powers. One of the main ways they do this is by calling upon the spirits for assistance. We know them as unclean spirits, 
but they're referred to as elemental spirits by the occultists. Elementals, or, quote, dwellers on the threshold, are spirit beings who require blood to manifest their ethereal body, which is formed by the very vapor of the blood itself. This is the reason why blood sacrifices were often burned to vaporize the blood, allowing it to be absorbed by the elemental spirit. Quote, they are the incubi and succubi, the monstrous children of impure dreams. When sufficiently condensed to be visible, they are only a vapor, colored by the reflection of a picture and having no independent life, they imitate the life of him who evokes them, as the shadow does the body. These elementals draw the vital heat from a person's in good health and quickly exhaust those who are weak. That is why one feels a chill of the atmosphere when approaching a medium who are persons possessed by these spirits that will never manifest in the presence of anyone able to unveil the mystery of their monstrous birth." End quote. Now that we've exposed their methods, let's take a quick look at their rise to political power. The year was 1592, and the North Berwick witches are tried for treason. During the trial, it was exposed that their Grand Master Witch, Francis Stewart, who was the Earl of Bothwell, attempted to remove King James of Scotland with the use of ritual magic. When he failed, his coven and himself were arrested, tried, and hanged. Lady Queensborough writes, quote, Studying the history of the Mopses in 1761, we find its members adorned with the distinctive garter of the witch, performing the ceremonial kissing of the devil's tail as part of the ritual of 18th century masonry. The coven of the Middle Ages is the Masonic Lodge of today, but the craft remains the craft." End quote. Now that we know the methods used by the other side, not only can we avoid them, but we can use them as indicators of their presence throughout history and piece together a timeline of events that not only reveals their presence, but exposes the very fact that they've been here all along, plotting, planning, and waiting for that perfect moment. Thank you all for watching. God bless you all. I taught them for their gold. And when the people had no more to give, they plundered and burned. In the winter of 1142, the war turned against Matilda. Her cousin Stephen besieged her here in Oxford Castle. Her garrison held out for three months, but with their supplies running low, they were close to surrender. At about 15, her father died unexpectedly, but his new queen was ambitious and worldly. Eleanor once said, I've married a monk, not a monarch. And there was another problem. The French king needed a son, and Eleanor gave birth only to girls. After 15 years and two daughters, Louis persuaded the church to declare the marriage void. The great heiress was once again available. Suitors circled, eager to obtain her hand and her lands. But Eleanor, was headstrong and independent. She was determined to marry the man who could help her fulfill her own dynastic ambitions, Henry Plantagenet. 